Welcome to LMU Community TV News. I'm Allison Barnett. Thanks for joining us. Let's take a look at the stories we have for you today. Citizens from around the area packed the Lyceum on the campus of Walter State Community College in Morristown on Thursday for the opening ceremony of the Vietnam Moving Wall. The Moving Wall is half-size replica of the Washington, D.C. Vietnam Veterans Memorial and holds the names of each soldier who died in combat fighting the war. The wall has made its way to Morristown by veterans and police escort on Wednesday. The ceremony featured a wreath laying for soldiers from around the area who lost their lives fighting in the Vietnam War. The guest speaker for the event was former Vietnam POW Bill Robinson, who is the author of the book, The Longest Rescue. Mr. Robinson took the time to speak with us about why the moving wall is so important to our history. I, I think it's very important because as an aging family, you might say, the Vietnam is just like World War II and Korea is starting to fade. And we need a shot in the arm, you might say, of reality of the service and sacrifice, not only of the individuals, but of the families who supported these individuals in their activity, in their service to our country. We were the, essentially the last draftees of America. Uh, a lot of those guys on that wall went kicking and screaming, but they went to serve their country and served it with honor. And each time we say a name, that's a name remembered. And, and we must continue to repeat those names so that they are not forgotten as this nation moves forward. Yes, we are a nation standing on the shoulders of giants, just like we stood on the shoulders of the Korean veterans the Korean veterans stood on the shoulders of the World War II veterans. And so each generation forward stands on the shoulders of the generations before them that gave the, the ultimate, in many cases, sacrifice for the freedoms that they were striving to maintain for this country. For it was Ronald Reagan who said that freedom is only one generation from extinction. And so we continue to have to have people to step up and stand up for our, our country. Well, it's just not names on the wall. As I said in my speech, they are the stars of my generation. People ask me, says, uh, why do you seem happy with such a great law? I said, they gave me that right to, and privilege to be happy. And I would not be serving them well if I wasn't happy. But that's what we all, simply service and sacrifice is all about. So the next generation or our generation can have something better than what we have. And so our life's goal is improve what we have, not to destroy and start over. And so, as I said in the beginning, we're continuously standing on the shoulders of giants. Walls open 24 hours a day and will remain at Walter State through Sunday with the closing ceremony beginning at 1 p.m. Carl Green was a man who helped his players not only on the court, but off of it as well. That was the message spread by many at the Claiborne County School Board meeting on Thursday. At the meeting, Carl Green's son Lance and Circuit Court Judge John McAfee asked the board considering voting his name to the new Claiborne High School gym in honor of the legendary coach. Several former players spoke at the meeting in support of the move, talking about how Carl Green affected their lives. Green coached for the Blue Devils for 25 seasons to become one of Tennessee's most successful high school basketball coaches. His team's won 17 district titles and he finished his career as Tennessee's fifth winningest coach in Class 2A. 471 of his 586 victories came at Claiborne County. Following the meeting, Lance Green and John McAfee spoke more about Coach Green's legacy and how he affected his players. Oh, he, he meant everything to me. He was, uh, was, was, was a father figure uh, to me. I played on his last two district titles in 82 and 84. In, in my senior year in 1984, and he, he just tugged me under his wing. 
and, and taught me that if you worked hard enough, if, if, you, if, you, if you just put forth the effort, you can accomplish anything. And I, I came from a, a broken family. Uh, neither, neither my parents uh, graduated from high school, and, and he instilled in me uh, a work ethic uh, that enabled me to go to college, uh, enabled me to go into law school and to, to spend 20 years in the military. I was uh, retired as a military trial judge in, in, in the Army Reserves. Uh, w when I got elected as General Sessions Judge here in 1998, uh, his inspiration, and, 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 and he helped me during that election, and, and, and was always a mentor to me, even, even after I left high school. Uh, it pushed me through that election, and then I was elected in 2004 as the circuit court judge. I, I can say, uh, w without a doubt, that I would not be here if it wasn't for Coach Green. And, and I say that as, as, as an individual. Uh, Coach Green coached for 25 years at Cleveland County High School. I am just one example of uh, so many people that he helped during that period of time. And, and most of us, uh, most of us that played for him were, were poor. And uh, it didn't matter who you were or what your name was or how, how big your parents' bank account, you had to play. If you could play, uh, you could play for Coach Green. Well, it's important for me, but it's more important for the community at large. I'm talking about the entire Blue Devils, um, the players, the students, the church members, the community. Uh, my father coached for 25 years, taught for 30, and he was a key part of this community. Everything from being the basketball coach to being a Sunday school teacher, little league programs, summer basketball camps, Cub Scouts, anything that involved the youth, my father was involved in. And uh, he really made it a point where any way that he could help a child, he was always willing to help out. And that was really his goal, his calling. Um, and I think that a lot of people, they understand that, and I think this is a great board, and they're going to do the right thing. And they'll name the school, the gymnasium, uh, after Coach Green in his honor. I could pretty much dribble before I could walk. My earliest memories are me being in that high school gymnasium and being surrounded by athletes and students. We're talking from the 70s with the longer hair, the bell-bottom pants, and I just remember um, so much fun that these students and players had and how my dad had a direct influence and impact on their lives. Always trying to do the right thing to help them, not just as being their coach and them being a great player, but just trying to be a positive role model, help them as far as their religious strength, their religious faith. He was always willing to help them get into church, attend church. Uh, he, would ever, he was always willing to help a student if they ever needed help. He developed programs if a child did not have the financial means to buy shoes. Um, always just willing to help. And he, he just, it was his calling to be a coach, to be a mentor, and to be around young people, to try to help them. He came from a very, very small community uh, near Hancock County. He grew up poor. And somewhere in his life, someone helped him and gave him an opportunity. And it was his calling to do the same thing, extend the same opportunity to every child. He was not into politics, did not believe in the race issues. He coached for a few years in Morristown during a very difficult time. And in Morristown, desegregation did not occur until 1968. And when my dad came to Claiborne County and began coaching in 66, he didn't ask for anyone's permission. He immediately integrated African-American players on the team. And the surprising thing was, no one really cared. Everyone, I guess, respected my father. He had a large family, and uh, it was not an issue. And everything turned out great. And he had a very, very successful career. He enjoyed his life. He enjoyed his time coaching in Claiborne County. They were very, very successful. And it was all because of just hard work, work ethic. They trained hard. They played hard. And he had great kids. And that made a difference. So the board will vote on this topic at a later meeting. The Bell County League of Women Voters held the first community forum on Thursday with the candidates running for state representative taking center stage inside City Hall. Republican Adam Bowling and Democrat Dustin Allen placed their focus on growing the community of Bell County and increasing job possibilities. Here to speak on you and why you should elect them to office is Adam Bowling and Dustin Allen. Well, uh, a couple reasons. One, number one, I love this area. Uh, I've lived here my whole life. I'm an eighth generation Bell Countyan. Uh, I want to see our area grow and thrive. 
Uh, I think we have a great opportunity uh, to make that happen here in the next few years. We've got some projects working, um, and we're going to continue to work on those. Uh, uh, Citizen Bell Harlan County should vote for me because of my experience. I've, I've done just about, I've been in just about every field of work that you can imagine. Uh, I'm, I'm one of the regular people here. Uh, I work every day. I do, uh, I do volunteer work for, for certain different things. And, you know, I, I'm just, I'm, I'm really driven to succeed. And, and that's, I want everybody else to have that opportunity also. The League of Women Voters will hold their second forum on October 18th, featuring candidates running for Middlesbrough City Council. Now let's take a look at your community calendar of events coming up over the next couple of weeks. Indian Creek Baptist Church will have its monthly singing at 6 p.m. on October 14th, featuring the Beeson family of Maynardville, Tennessee, and others. Everyone is welcome. That was your community calendar. We're now moving on to your LMU Community TV News 5-day weather forecast. Fall weather is here and it looks like it's going to stay. Saturday morning is looking to be partly cloudy with a high of 44 degrees and a 10% chance of rain. As the day progresses, the temperature will rise to 58 and the chance of rain will decrease to 0%. Looking at your three-day planner, Sunday is looking to have a 50% chance of morning showers with a high of 63. Monday will have a 90% chance of rain with a high of 69. Moving to your five-day, Tuesday will have a 70% chance of showers with a high of 58 and Wednesday will be partly cloudy with a high of 60 degrees. Now's a quick recap of your five-day weather forecast, but stay with us. It's coming up after the break. Brandon Burke will be bringing you your sports report right here on LMU Community TV News. What do we know about learning? It takes place beyond the pages of a book. We learn by exploring, by trying new things, by connecting, by sharing, we learn by taking chances and dreaming big. At Lincoln Memorial University, learning is beyond the books. It's everywhere. Guess what? I have some news for you. There's free food right there, junk food. Do you see that truck? Oh, geez. It's a two Michelin star chef. All for free, ladies and gentlemen. All for free. Here we have a panzanella with summer vegetables and pesto. Enjoy. How we doing? Fantastic. So what do you got going on underneath that plate there? This food is really about to be thrown away. Yeah. Really? Is there, is there something wrong with this food? Where did you get it from? From farmer's markets. They put aside the ugly vegetables and the ugly fruits. Carrot top, soft avocados. It was all food that was going to be discarded. Even the drink you had is made from like a little bruised peach. Did it taste a little it's like bruised? Great. It's good. The average person throws away 24 pounds of food a month. That's a lot. Isn't that a lot? Go visit savethefood.com for more information. Thank you. Junk food time! I love taking care of my mom. It wasn't easy at first. She learned how to better communicate her needs. And you learned how to not ignore yours. I discovered how to make healthier meals. And I discovered how much I enjoyed them. Becoming a caregiver is a learning experience for everyone. Find articles, tips, and tools from experts and others who have been in your place. The Caregiving Resource Center at aarp.org slash caregiving. Hi, I'm Dr. Shields, and I'm a physician and the medical director at LMU Medical Clinics. This is a brief announcement about keeping LMU and you healthy during the upcoming flu season. Influenza, or flu for short, is a virus that causes fever, body aches, and upper respiratory symptoms like cough, runny nose, and sore throat. It is transmitted through the air and can even be spread on objects touched by someone who has the flu. The virus spreads easily from person to person and is most active from October through March. There are three things you can do to prevent becoming ill with the flu. First, get vaccinated. The most effective way of preventing the flu is to get the flu vaccine every year. The vaccine does not give you the flu or make you sick. The vaccine may not be 100% effective. However, it does offer significant protection and lessen the symptoms should you get the flu. The CDC recommends everyone six months and older be vaccinated before the flu season begins. Number two, 
Wash your hands. Stop the spread of germs and protect yourself with frequent hand washing with soap or alcohol-based hand sanitizer. And third, if you are sick, stay home. Should you become ill with flu-like symptoms of fever, sore throat, cough, limit your contact with others. Schedule an appointment as soon as possible with LMU Medical Clinic or your healthcare provider. There are antivirals that may be indicated if started within 48 hours of symptoms. Stay home until you are fever-free for 24 hours without over-the-counter medications like Motrin or Tylenol. I'm Dr. Shields, and this has been a brief announcement about keeping LMU and you healthy during the upcoming flu season. Welcome back. Just four days removed from knocking off South Atlantic Conference rival Wingate. For the first time in seven years, the Lincoln Memorial men's soccer team took a quick break out of league play on Wednesday afternoon at home, although it didn't stop their momentum in the slightest. A 4-2 rail splitter victory coming over the Nighthawks of North Georgia. LMU's offensive flurry paid off last Saturday in their last outing against the Bulldogs, securing 19 shot opportunities that led to three goals. On Wednesday in Harrogate, the rail splitters reached just one number lower in shot tries, but made up for it with an extra score for good measure, outshooting the Nighthawks in close proximity to the net, 10-7. Senior forward Victor Perez was not to be denied in the two-goal triumph over North Georgia, recording the team's first hat trick of the season, the second time that Perez has collected three scores in a single single game in his last 12 meetings. Going into the halftime break, it was a 2 to nothing Lincoln Memorial lead thanks to the first two of Perez's three goals in the 13th and the 20th minutes. The Rail Splitters lead extended to three only two and a half minutes into the second period, courtesy of another forward, Matteo Buffalo. While the Nighthawks were finally able to mount a score of their own in minute number 53, Perez banged in his fourth shot on goal attempt that led to his third score just three minutes after UNG got on the board, the seventh strike of 2018 for the senior standout. North Georgia tallied the game's final goal in the 72nd minute on Wednesday, although it wouldn't matter in terms of the end result. Lincoln Memorial improving to 6-2-2 and two and two overall, along with a 3-1-1 and one and one sack resume, which was unaffected by the victory in non-conference play. All four LMU goals came in assisted fashion, whether it be two from Felipe de Souza or two from Miguel Reyes. And now, with three consecutive W's pushing the rail splitters into the weekend at high speed, LMU begins a season-closing five five-game league stretch on Saturday afternoon, traveling to Hickory, North Carolina to meet the Bears of Lenore Rhine. With a fourth-place standing in the latest conference rankings, Lincoln Memorial hopes to keep it rolling when they face first-place LR, the first touch from Hickory commencing at 7.30 p.m. And as the men's soccer club awaits a key match with Lenore Ryan on Saturday, the Lady Rail Splitters prepare to make the same trip, kicking off the weekend sack doubleheader against the Bears, having to wait a full seven days to hit the field again off the heels of the most monumental win of the season the previous Saturday. Each of the last 12 times Lincoln Memorial faced off against the Wingate Bulldogs, the Lady Rail Splitters couldn't get the monkey off their back, falling time and time again until the streak was broken in 2018, LMU pulling out a thrilling one to zero double overtime victory, their second in a row overall. In what was the definition of a defensive slugfest, it was a combined 35 shots between the two conference rivals without a score. That is until Itzel Ballesteros put the game and the 12 game losing streak to Wingate to bed, receiving an assist from Michaela Vang in the 106th minute, making LMU 7 3 overall. 3-2 in league action, finalizing their sixth win via shutout this season alone. Quieting the Bulldogs for the first time in over a decade and securing the team's best start to a season since 2014, Lincoln Memorial battles an equally battle-tested team in the form of Lenore Ryan on Saturday. While the Lady Rail Splitters still would like to improve upon their sack standings, currently in sixth place, the Bears sit alone in third entering the weekend, once holding a five-game winning streak, although since dropping two straight Straight contest against Queens and Limestone, dropping LR to 7-4-1 and four and one as a whole and 5-2 and two in conference play. Desperate to get back into the win column and clocking in as the highest scoring team in the league with 20 goals in sack outings, the Bears hope to improve upon their 10-5 record in the all-time series with, with LMU. The Lady Rail Splitters having lost three in a row to LR, nine of the last 11, and with only one win ever in Hickory. Another quality win over an opponent the likes of Lenore Ryan would boost Lincoln Memorial's resume even further as the first touch between the Bears and the Blue and Gray is set for 5 p.m. on Saturday with the men's matchup scheduled to immediately follow. 
It's going to be another crucial two-game road trip for the LMU women's volleyball squad this Friday and Saturday, heading to North Carolina for a 48-hour two-parter with Queens and Catawba away from home, an area that Lincoln Memorial hasn't particularly excelled in this season. Last weekend, the Lady Rail Splitters disposed of the Coker Cobras in a straight sets victory before competing hard against the juggernaut Wingate Bulldogs the next afternoon, falling in the end in four sets, the only time in 2018 LMU has tasted defeat in Harrogate. It was back to their winning ways on Tuesday, however, completing the three-game homestand by besting in-state rival Carson Newman three sets to one, moving to 10-6 and six overall with a 6-4 and four South Atlantic Conference distinction, good enough to land sole possession of fourth place in the latest league standing. The only blemish on LMU's reputation in 2018 is their 1-5 record when playing either on the road or on a neutral court. And on Friday and Saturday, Lincoln Memorial looks to turn the tide against two teams below them in the conference rankings. For the Royals of Queens, who are 7th in the league, it's been a roller coaster season, winning the first four, losing eight of the next ten, winning three in a row, and most recently losing back-to-back -back matches for a grand total of nine wins next to ten losses, a 5-7 conference distinction. LMU got the better of Queens in their first meeting this season in four sets way back in the sack opener in early September, heading to Charlotte for a 7 p.m. opening serve on Friday. For the Indians of Catawba, who coincidentally also were defeated by LMU in four sets in late September, it's been a head-scratcher of a year, winning three straight to open the season before going 3-15 and 15 since, 10 of those losses coming in straight sets. Facing Catawba at 2 p.m. on Saturday, the Lady Railsplitters hope to chunk a pair of road wins together consecutively having only beaten Queens in Charlotte once before, searching for win number seven all-time in Salisbury. To find out how Lincoln Memorial performs against the Royals and the Indians on the volleyball court and for score updates on women's and men's soccer's road venture to Lenore Rhine, you can visit www.lmurailsplitters.com. And last Saturday in the NCAA football universe, the Tennessee Volunteers took the week off for their bye while the Kentucky Wildcats went to war on the road against Texas A&M in College Station. While the end result of that battle against the Aggies tipped just away from UK in a 20-14 overtime defeat, the first loss of the year for the 5-1 18th ranked Wildcats, it's now Big Blue Nation's turn to take the week off, forced to wait another week before they can hit the field once more. That leaves the spotlight solely on Tennessee for week six. Seven, still stuck inside an absolutely brutal four-game schedule, facing their second of three straight ranked foes this Saturday, visiting the number 21 Auburn Tigers in Jordan-Hare Stadium. The Volunteers, who have yet to gain an SEC win thus far on the year in two tries, take on War Eagle at 12 o'clock noon, televised by the SEC Network, hoping to snap an 11-game conference losing streak that dates back to the final game of 2016. While the Vols have struggled against the likes of Florida and number 2 Georgia, most recently losing a 38-12 decision to the Dogs in Athens two weeks ago, the Tigers haven't looked as fierce as they did earlier on in the season, dropping an ugly 23-9 contest at Mississippi State last Saturday to sink 14 spots in the rankings down to 21st, now at 4-2 and two on the year, along with a one-point home loss to LSU. With the Auburn offense struggling and the Tennessee defense thriving, touchdowns may be hard to come by in this weekend's SEC battle as the Vols search for a signature win on the road with top-ranked Alabama looming in the following seven days. And then only six more races remain in the 2018 NASCAR Monster Energy Cup Series playoff. And after Chase Elliott snuck into first place in the standings thanks to a victory lane run through at Dover last Sunday, drivers will roll into the famous Talladega Super Speedway this weekend for the 1000Bulbs.com 500. As Elliott zoomed past Denny Hamlin and Joey Logano in the Gander Outdoors 400 a week ago, the number nine vehicle leaped Kevin Harvick and Kyle Busch in the chase standings to seize the first place position. Martin Truex Jr. and Logano closing out the top five. While Harvick and Bush were far and away the two most impressive drivers throughout the regular season, they haven't made much noise in the playoffs up to this point, leaving Elliott to hold the number one spot. Kurt Busch, Brad Keselowski, Ryan Blaney, Eric Almarola, and Clint Boyer sit as the rest of the top ten, awaiting the green light from Talladega as drivers will start their engines for the 1000Bulbs.com 500 on Sunday at 2 p.m. And you can catch the action on television through NBC. And that is all for sports entering the weekend, but stay tuned as more LMU Community TV news is headed your way right after this. So, so we, we were, were walking, walking to school. school. I started thinking about lunch. 
Mom taught me turkey and cheese. She's I smart. Really cheese pizza. Sometimes her mind wanders. We should have a sleepover. I remember saying, Laura? I think I heard Laura. Mom say something. The sign says don't walk. Sometimes it's so overwhelming. I really hope she doesn't I have really another bad day. I really hope I don't have another bad day at school today. When you can see learning and attention issues from their side, you can be on their side. Go to understood.org, a free online resource with support and tools to help your child thrive. Here we go. We're gonna go out there in the rain. You're gonna get wet. All right, here we go. Oh, look at the rain. Oh, look at the rain. Okay, quick. Oh, yeah, yes. So much fun. Mwah. Dada. I like to eat, eat, eat apples and bananas. I want to eat, eat, eat apples and bananas. I need to eat, eat, eat apples and bananas. Why can't I eat, eat, eat apples and bananas? One in five children struggles with hunger in America. Support the Feeding America nationwide network of food banks to help provide meals to those in need. Join us at feedingamerica.org. Thanks for watching LMU Community TV News. I'm Allison Barnett, and have a great weekend.